Hello everyone, Neil Tappin here from Golf Monthly and welcome to the London Club and this video looking at the seven strangest or most unusual rules incidents that have happened out on tour. Now some of these are really famous that I'm sure many of you watching this will have heard about. Some of them are less obvious, less well known about. They're all incredibly unusual. So let's head out now onto the golf course here at the London Club and look at the seven strangest rules incidents on tour. Okay, so hopefully you can see behind me here, there is a golf ball stuck up a tree. Now, Jez, what are the famous rules yeah. incidents where balls have been stuck up a tree? Okay, well, golfers of a certain age would automatically remember Bernard Langer at Fulford in 1981. Slightly younger golfers may well remember Sergio Garcia clambering around in a tree at Bay Hill just six or seven years ago. That would suggest to me then that you're able to play the ball as it lies if it's yeah. stuck up a tree. Is that true? It is true. Tree is just really part of the general area and if you're able to get up there to play the ball then you may go ahead and do that if it's uh, wise and safe to do so and perhaps uh, more importantly their balls were higher up the tree but you are allowed to get assistance in getting up there. I think Langer enlisted some of the crowd to help him get that first foothold and Garcia um, clambered on a buggy to enable him to reach the branch to haul himself up. Yeah, it's maybe not that advisable. It's risky, it's dangerous. It's also risky from a rules perspective, isn't it? Well, once you're up there, you've obviously got to be careful not to move the ball. And if you're clambering around and not quite sure of your footing, you could easily lose your footing, move the ball and undo all the good work of spending time getting up there. Yes. Uh, and also you can't improve the lights. So you've got to be very careful what you do when you're up there. You can't improve the conditions affecting the stroke. Otherwise, again, you'll be penalised. What about identifying it, Jess? Yeah, well, you've got to be able to identify it's your ball before you play it. Obviously, if you've clambered up the tree, you can see whether it's your ball or not. If you're on the ground working out whether to perhaps take an unplayable, um, you can use binoculars. You probably won't have any, but on tour that has happened. Or maybe a rangefinder. Can you zoom in enough with your rangefinder to see your markings on the ball up the tree? Yeah, so there you have it. Ball up a tree. You might think it's a rare scenario, but it has happened. OK, so this one relates to another very famous rules incident. It happened in 2018 at the US Open at Shinnecock Hills. Jez, yeah. what happened? OK, well, if I say Phil Mickelson, most people automatically know he uh, ran round and hit his ball while it was still moving on the green. He had a 12-foot bogey putt on the 13th in the third round. He hit it too hard. The ball was going to roll off the green and go some distance back down the, the fringe and the fairway. Uh, rather than allow it to do that, he ran round and hit it again while it was still moving. So what was the ultimate penalty in that scenario? Well, the ultimate penalty was two strokes, uh, and the rule at the time was 14-5, which said you must not make a stroke at a ball while it is moving, and the penalty for doing that is two strokes. And the USGA felt that that rule covered the situation that happened, and therefore two strokes was the appropriate penalty. Yeah, I remember it very clearly. I think he was playing with Beef he was. Johnson at the time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's, I guess, one of those scenarios that arises when these guys are playing on a golf course that's set up quite hard, very hard, yeah. and the greens are incred incredibly quick, uh, and it's just one of those things that happened. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's, it's uh, close to the edge. I don't think he was playing particularly well. It's a tournament he's always desperately wanted to win, and this one clearly wasn't going to go his way either. So I think it was just a, a accumulation of various events, and suddenly he was striking a moving ball. OK, so this one happened at the 2013 US Masters. It's one of the most famous rules incidents I think I can remember from watching golf. Jez, what happened? Uh, OK, so Tiger is playing the, the 15th hole and he's hit pretty much the perfect third shot in, which normally would just miss the flag, spin and stop pretty close, very close maybe. Instead, it's hit the flag and bounced back into the water. Ouch, and you see it every now and again on tour. These guys are so good, so accurate, so precise. They can hit the flag with their yeah. pitch shots every now and again. What, what did uh, Tiger do next? OK, well, he pondered his drop options, decided not to take back on the line relief because the ground was a bit soft over there and elected to again replay the shot from where he'd last played from under penalty of stroke and distance. Except he didn't play quite from exactly where he'd last played from. He purposely went two club lengths further back to avoid the risk of hitting the flag again. Doing the same thing again, which again underlines how good these guys are. So, yes. so what was the, the resolution then? Okay, well, 
you're not allowed to do that because you have to drop as close as possible to the spot where you originally played from. So to say that you've actually found that spot and then gone a bit further back is against the rules. But the Masters Committee had already been alerted to it and reviewed it and deemed it OK if, so that he could sign his card. Right, okay. And then I think later on was when Tiger mentioned the going two glove lengths further back. By that time, he'd signed his card, so... There was a lot of talk about whether he should be disqualified or what. But in the end, the Masters Committee decided, because they'd already okayed him to sign his card, he would get a two-shot penalty for effectively playing from a wrong place uh, and the scorecard would subsequently be changed. His six became an eight on that hole. Yeah, um, and, and I, I think one of the reasons this was such a, a famous incident was because it was, firstly, it was Tiger. Secondly, he was in contention at the Masters. And I think, Jez, yes. did he not finish four shots off yeah, at the well, end of it this, or something? This was the, the interesting thing for me was that if the ball had spun and stopped stone dead and he tapped in for birdie four um, rather than the eight he had to sign for, four shots difference and he finished four shots out of the playoff. OK, Jess, so this one refers to one of the most famous incidents out on tour where a player has got multiple penalty shots for yeah. doing something. What happened? Yeah, these happen from time to time. This one, we're talking about preferred lies. You've got a rubbish lie there in the winter in the UK, typically preferred lies in operation. You'd be able to move that. Sometimes they play preferred lies on tour in extreme conditions. Uh, and in the French Open in 2019, Marcel Zim thought they were playing preferred lies and they weren't. Ah, ah so what happened? Well, what happened was, uh, by the time the rules officials caught up with him in his first round, he'd preferred his lie five times. Right. So um, how many penalty shots is that? Well, we're talking two shots per incident for playing from a wrong place, rule 14.7. So by the time he reached the turn, his one over had become 11 over. Ouch. Yeah. Ouch. And I guess, I mean, it's, it feels incredibly harsh, isn't it? Because a, a penalty like that, 10 shots for, in a professional tournament, is just going to effectively count you out, isn't it? You're not going to be able to recover from that. No, and that's exactly what he decided. He opted, to, didn't have to do this, but he opted to disqualify himself because I guess he thought he had very little chance from that position. Yeah, and but I guess it's one of the oldest rules in the book, you know, play it as it lies. He yeah. wasn't doing anything that he thought was untoward. It wasn't, you know, trying to gain an advantage, but you are gaining an advantage in that scenario. So I guess there's, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is, and I guess the moral of the tale, if there is one, is always check the local rules. Yes. OK, Jess, so this one happened quite a few years ago now, 12 yeah. years ago, uh, and it sticks in my mind very clearly because I remember thinking at the time this was very harsh. Uh, explain what happened. OK, so Stuart Sink is playing in the 2008 Zurich Classic. He's standing in a bunker to play a shot outside the bunker, which he then hits into another bunker 180 yards up the hole. His caddy rakes the bunker he was standing in, and that action subsequently led to him being disqualified. But you've got to rake a bunker well, if you just hit a shot in it. Unfortunately, the rules at the tyre under Rule 13.4 said you weren't allowed to test the condition of a hazard or right. a similar hazard. Right. That was deemed to be a similar hazard. Bunkers were hazards at the time. And therefore, by raking it before he played the bunker shot further up the hole, uh, that was what led to him being disqualified because it didn't come to light until after he'd signed his card. Therefore, he'd signed for a wrong score. A wrong score. Ouch. Well, yeah. that's... A, t a really tough break, but it actually led to a, a change in the rules. Didn't yeah. It? Well, I think it was uh, it was very soon afterwards the Joint Rules Committee of the USGA and the RNA changed things because they didn't want people to the think, well, OK, how do I care for the course properly if I'm not allowed to do this for 180 yards, then got to walk back. So they changed it to allow that uh, as long as you didn't improve the conditions affecting your stroke. And now, 12 years down the line, Rule 12.2b, kind of positively encourages you to care for the course to the extent that you could rake part of a bunker that isn't anywhere near where your ball is lying before you play the shot if it was for the purpose of caring for the course. Caring for the course, maintaining a good pace of play, all of those things, it all makes a difference now. Back in 2008, I guess it shows you that the rules of golf are constantly evolving, aren't they? They are evolving. They, they do listen to what's going on out there and sometimes very positive changes do happen. This one is the story of the six-foot putt for birdie that ended up in a quadruple bogey. Yeah. Guess what happened? Well, it also involved one of these blowing across at a very inopportune moment. And right. this, is, this is Matthew Southgate in the 2017 Web.com Tour Finals, the second-to-last event. 
he, as you say, had a six foot putt for birdie. The leaf blew across as the ball was on its way to the hole, uh, knocked it off line. He tapped in with a thinking. That was unlucky. That I'm was sure. unlucky, and it turned out to be a lot more than unlucky because what he should actually have done is um, cancelled the stroke and replayed it. Yeah, it's, it's one of those very well. It was one of those very rare scenarios where you cancel the shot yeah. that you just hit. It doesn't happen very often in the rules. No. Um, and so he carried on. He, he just tapped in. Carried on, tapped in for par. He thought, but rule 19.1b at the time. Don't look it up because the rule numbers have changed since then. Um, said that a ball in motion from a, a putt from on the putting green that's deflected by an outside agency, a leaf, uh, must um, be replaced and replayed. The stroke must be cancelled and you must replay it. It wasn't an option, you had to. Because he didn't do that, he then played his next shot from a wrong place. That's a two-shot penalty. And because none of this came to fully to light until after he'd signed his card, there was another two-shot penalty for signing for a, a wrong score. I think this is one of the most unfortunate rules incidents I can think of. Yes. Jez. But actually, to his credit, well, he, he took he, it on the chin very well, didn't he? He took it on the chin and blamed himself for not knowing the rules better, even though it ultimately was a major reason why he didn't get his PGA Tour card for the following season. Right, Jez, the next one, I remember very clearly watching this on TV. It was in the final round of the Waste Management, I think it was 2019. Yes. And it involved Ricky Fowler. It did. What, what happened? OK, well, it's the 11th hole last round. He's leading uh, and he's played a pitch that has just gone a bit too far, trundled off the back of the green and rolled into a penalty area. Right. So, so he's then taken a drop. Presumably. Taken a drop at this, somewhere like this point here. On quite a steep slope. Yeah, on a steep slope. Ball has come to rest. He's then wandered up to the, the top of the bank to have a look at what he got to do. Doing. Uh, and this is, a I don't know, a few seconds, a minute later, he's standing at the top and the ball suddenly moves and rolls back into the penalty area again. Ah, so in normal circumstances, if this wasn't a penalty area yeah. behind me or behind him, he would yeah. be able to play that ball as it lies, right? Yeah, rule 9.3 would have deemed that because the ball had been at rest, any subsequent movement is via natural forces, and when that happens, you simply play the ball from its new spot. Ricky's problem was that the new spot was two feet underwater again. So what did he have to do? So um, it seems very harsh, and a lot of people were up in arms about it at the time, but he has no real option, if he can't play it as it lies, to um, take another penalty drop. Just, I guess, one of those fairly rare rule scenarios, yeah. but that just feels really harsh, really tough on somebody. You know, they're gaining absolutely no advantage. No. But they, the rules are there for a reason. And I think this happened not long after the new rules had come into force, and a right. lot of people were up in arms saying that the new rules are uh, silly, this is madness. But this rule hadn't changed. This was how it was before. So this was nothing to do with the rules changes. It was just an incident that occurred not long after the changes had come in. Thankfully for Ricky, yes. all forgotten now, because he went on, he won the tournament, not a problem. But that one really could have, in another circumstances, costed him really quite a lot. Yep. So there you have it. That's our look at the seven strangest rules incidents on tour. Uh, the last thing that I'll uh, say to you guys is that if you haven't done already, please do hit the subscribe button to make sure you don't miss any of our videos. We cover the rules in great detail, but we also cover things like equipment and instruction as well. So if there is anything that you're looking for from a golfing perspective, hit that subscribe button and you'll get what you need from the Golf Monthly channel. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.